Oh, this is an exciting video. Today we are talking all about the best affordable skincare updated for 2022. This has to be one of the most requested video topics that I get on this channel, and I totally understand. Who doesn't love incredible and inexpensive products. However, I really wanted to make sure I was throwing myself into this video and truly choosing for you products that are actually favorites instead of, uh, you know, products that are good for the price. So this video is essentially going to be more of one of those drugstore products that replaced high-end for me. This is truly products that I love, but there's a catch. I felt like I couldn't do this video just from one perspective. I can't do just the best of US drugstore because in my personal opinion, there are certain products that the US drugstore does better than anywhere else. And yet there's certain products that Korean products do better. We have Hungarian skincare in this video and some of you already know the brand. I know, I know. So basically it's the best affordable skincare by region, which I hope is helpful. I hope that's helpful for those of you that are watching from the US or from other countries. Of course, we have timestamps in the description box below. So feel free to jump to a certain category that interests you. But let's go ahead and get into it. And I think we should go ahead and start with the US drugstore products. Now I've said this before, and I'm saying it again today, there is a category that the US drugstore excels at. I genuinely, with every bit of my being, feel like you do not ever need to buy high-end products within this category, and that is, of course, drugstore cleansers. What's so funny about cleanser is that when I first got into skincare, I had it in my head that it wasn't that important of a step. It turns out I was half right and half wrong. I was half right because I suspected that, you know, all these fancy ingredients that you sometimes see in high-end cleansers, I suspected, can those really absorb into your skin in products that are, you know, washed off your skin after a couple of minutes? I was right to have that suspicion. I have an entire video talking all about active and basic ingredients in cleansers. It basically turns out that uh, they can absorb into your skin to some extent if they're formulated very delicately and carefully, but my argument is, why would you not just worry about, you know, antioxidants in something like your serum step or your moisturizer step? Why have to cram it in a cleanser? But where I was wrong is that it's so important to find the right cleanser for you, a cleanser that cleanses your skin thoroughly and yet leaves it feeling not dry, not stripped. It's so interesting. You know how the Sephora sale was just going on? I was on the Sephora subreddit a lot during the sale because there were so many posts coming up and a lot of people were asking things like, should I buy this expensive skincare product? And you know, no context as to their skin type or what they're trying to resolve about their skin. And yet people were answering, yeah, it's really good. No, it's terrible. And I, I just found myself going, oh man, this is such a strange and unhelpful approach to skincare. You have to understand what it is that you are trying to fix within your skin or at least trying to manage within your skin. You need to know that in order to select the right products for you. There's a lot of things in this world where you can divide it into categories of good or bad. You know, if you're shopping for, I don't know, a vacuum cleaner, you just want one that sucks. <laughs> Wait. That's actually, that's a terrible example <laughs> because it's, it's good if it sucks. That's what you want. It, uh, like you're shopping for a shower cleaner. You want to make sure it cleans your shower well. That's what matters. Can you tell I've done a lot of cleaning in my surgery recovery? <laughs> this is all to tell you I selected no less than five cleansers for this video and I feel like I could have kept going. And I will tell you why I've selected these and what they're for. So first up, my personal holy grail, the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. This is such an incredible product. It is probably the most game-changing product I've ever used for my acne. And it is $15 or under at the drugstore. Because I have dry and acne prone skin, this idea of a cream cleanser is a great idea to treat my dryness. And this 4% benzoyl peroxide is an incredible ingredient for acne, but I've always hated that ingredient. It's so drying 
on my dry skin. So keep in mind that this idea that your skin doesn't really absorb everything from your cleanser, but it doesn't absorb nothing either, use that to your advantage. If there's ingredients that you're really struggling to incorporate into your routine, you may want to try them in the cleansing step because you are most likely to get some amount of benefit from that, but it's not going to be as intense of an experience as it would be with a leave-on product. So a similar idea to that, but something that may be better for those of you who are trying to address concerns about enlarged pores, if you have blackheads, more mild types of acne, you may wanna look for a salicylic acid cleanser. This one right here from Sweet Chef, the Carrot Ginger and Salicylic Acid Pore Cleanser. This is an incredible cleanser that is so Super fun, who doesn't love a foamy experience, and yet it does not feel stripping. A couple more basic cleansers here, the Versed Gentle Cycle Milky Cleanser, absolutely incredible for dry skin. If you have dry skin, you may wanna look for milky or cream cleansers. And if you have oily or normal skin, you may just wanna look for a basic gel cleanser that is not drying. The Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel. And then finally, the Rosen Super Smoothie Cleanser. I know some amount of people think that all physical exfoliation is the St. Ives apricot scrub. It is not. This is a very gentle physical exfoliator made with fruit seeds. So if you're somebody who's, you know, struggled with chemical exfoliation, you may want to explore this idea of physical exfoliation, but don't feel like it has to be the most harsh option on the market. Start gentle. Anyway, that's five options. I could have kept going. These are all incredible. Incredible. They are all incredible cleansers that are gentle and for different purposes. My other favorite category at the U.S. drugstore is none other than moisturizer. Hear me out on this one, it requires an explanation. First off, the technology behind cosmetic elegance seems to have gotten better. There are some very cosmetically elegant moisturizers at the US drugstore. But in addition to that, I think some amount of people believe your moisturizer has to be crammed with good for your skin ingredients. Kind of like how I was saying, the most important aspect of cleanser is cleansing. The most important aspect of moisturizer is moisturizing. If you are trying to work in, you know, antioxidants, vitamins, other beneficial ingredients into your routine, I would say do that in your serum step, maybe in your toner step. By the time you get to moisturizer, you may not need to add all of these additional benefits. You just need to moisturize. So I'm a broken record on this one, I know. The e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. I think this one is going to be so incredible for people that have a normal to dry skin type. It's one of those where I wouldn't say it's necessarily super lightweight, but I think it's light enough that if you have a normal skin type, you'll be able to use it. And if you have dry skin, you can apply this one a little bit more heavy. And it is so occlusive and protective on your skin without having any kinds of irritants within it. Another favorite for me, the Good Molecules Silicone-Free Priming Moisturizer. This is such an interesting product because you absolutely can wear this so that it is very light feeling on your skin. If you have an oily skin type, I think you will like this. And yet perplexingly, I guess because it's a primer, it still does feel occlusive on your skin. And if you have a more normal to dry skin type, you can still feel that sensation of your skin being protected. That's that sensation of moisturizing. One thing I will note with this is that I it took too long going through my last version of this. I bought this one more recently, the little travel size I have. It does seem to kind of thicken over time. I'm not really sure why. Ooh, I want to comment on Lab Muffin's video about Good Molecules. So many of you sent me that video. So as you all know, I love Good Molecules dearly. Lab Muffin, who is one of my favorite content creators, made a video critiquing the brand. Now let me tell you, <laughs> Are you panicking if you're a Lab Muffin fan? I'm not that great of an actress, I'm really not. I think she did a great job on that video and I think she had some very valid points. In case you missed it, Good Molecules has this nothing to hide ingredients list where they disclose the percentage of everything in their products. However, she caught them. She totally caught them. I think it was even the toner. It says on the front, uh, made with niacinamide and vitamin C to brighten. But if you look at that nothing to hide ingredients list that they're so proud of, the vitamin C is at too low of a level to brighten. 
I think she made such a good point. How are you going to have this nothing to hide ingredients list, but still make that kind of claim on the packaging? But the take home for me is a little bit different. I still think the nothing to hide ingredients list is an incredible step in the right direction. Because of that, you can catch them in these kind of mistakes. And yet, I do hope her video motivates Good Molecules to realize when you choose to disclose everything, you probably should change your approach to labeling, to highlighting ingredients, to make it a, uh, you know, a, an accurate representation of that ingredients list that you're so proud of. That toner is an incredible product, it really is, but it's not a product you should buy for the vitamin C, you should buy it for the niacinamide, which is at the level that's studied in the published literature. So yeah, I mean, I think she did a good job. I hope Good Molecules takes that feedback into account. I still love them, and I still love Lab Muffin. And for all of the people who are critiquing her, I feel like some amount of people, ooh, this might be an unpopular opinion, <laughs> I feel like some amount of people within the skincare communities care more about being right than progressing in what we learn and what we know about skincare. And let me tell you something, the sciences are not about being right. It's about learning more and more and doing better. Anyway, that's it. I still love the nothing to hide ingredients list because of my inquisitive mind combined with having allergies. It's very helpful for me to understand that. Anyway. One more product in the moisturizing category. It's funny that I have the CeraVe healing ointment because I've been going off about Aquaphor, but I'm actually out of Aquaphor. Anyway, they're kind of semantics. This isn't really a traditional moisturizer. I know a lot of people use it for something called slugging. I, I am aware of slugging. I don't personally do the slugging very often because of what it does to my pillowcase. <laughs> Listen, I, I toss and turn in my sleep. I toss and turn in my sleep. I cannot help it. I'm an insomnia. I had a really bad tossing and turn night last night, actually. But anyway, if I slug, I will eventually put my face into the pillow so that when I wake up in the morning, I'm lifting my face and the pillowcase is coming with me, leaving the pillow behind. Come on. Someone knows. These products, be it Aquaphor or the CeraVe Healing Ointment, they help so much in the healing process, and the reason is because of how occlusive they are. That occlusive property is what feels like a barrier on your skin, and it is. It protects your skin from the outside world, and it allows your skin to heal underneath that layer. Let's talk about some serums next. I feel like this might actually surprise some of you. So I am going to go with an entire category of the Ordinary's peptide serum specifically. I feel like peptides started to really pick up within the skincare communities kind of more recently, and I am so on board with them. I think they are incredible, but you have to, again, like the cleanser section, you have to understand how they work and what they do. And I really and truly think The Ordinary has some of the best peptide options. My deal with The Ordinary is because I do wear makeup, I don't really love using the brand all the time during the day. I think there's some pilling with certain products from them. However, for a night routine, love The Ordinary. You can get some incredible prices on incredible products and, uh, I would have to say one of my personal favorites is the Argyroline solution, 10%. This is on the bottle, targets the appearance of dynamic facial lines. Nice wording, the ordinary. So yes, it does do that. Dynamic facial lines, meaning wherever you move your face. You are in particular most likely to see the benefits from this on your forehead. And with consistent usage of this product, it is absolutely amazing that you really don't see as much movement on your forehead. I do feel like this product is a little tricky though in that it seems to work really well for some people and not well for others. So for me, when I'm consistent with it, I can't do what I'm doing right now. I haven't been consistent with it. We're trying other stuff right now. Uh, but when I am, yeah, it's, it's a, a shocking difference. And yet other people don't seem to have that same effect. So I think it's one where, you know, don't buy 10 bottles of it, buy one and see what it does for your skin. Also be consistent with it. I think that is very important as well. But for forehead lines, it's incredible in my personal opinion. Now it works very differently from Matrixel. Matrixel is a product that uses signaling peptides to convince your skin to make more 
collagen. So while you'd want to use the Air Geraline solution on your forehead, this is something you can use all over your face, you can use it all over your neck, and it is a very, very beloved peptide blend. Uh, this is something that I like to combine with retinol. I see a lot of people say you can't do that. I don't know why people think that. They appear together in formulas all the time incredible combination. You don't have to separate out your retinol and your peptide nights. Do it all together. With one exception, the Buffet and Copper Peptides Serum. So I'm almost done with this bottle. I'm hoping that by the time I finish it, I finally really decided if this is worth it. I think this is the most expensive product in this video uh, because copper peptides are expensive. And I'm not sure that it's worth it. I'm actually, I'm really not sure it's worth it. I actually, as of right now, I'll finish the bottle and get back to you. I kind of think buying these and using a good retinol, maybe working your way up to a retinaldehyde, I think that's probably better. If not better, easier, a lot easier, because copper peptides are fragile ingredients, so you have to be super careful with what you pair this with. And yeah, that's why I'm not always sure the buffet with copper peptides is worth it. Nice product, nice product, but tricky. Okay, you can skip this section if you don't have acne, but if you do, I know I'm a broken record, but the Peach Slices Deep Blemish Micro Darts are incredible. They are a dupe for the Zit Sticka, but at a fraction of the price. In case you haven't heard about these, they are one-time use little acne patches that actually have these kind of uh, dissolving needles within them. They are so effective for when you can feel a pimple underneath your skin, but it hasn't yet come to the surface. Those little micro darts, the dissolving needles, will go deep into your skin and target that situation underneath your skin. If you are buying this at Ulta, totally understand. Ulta has some good deals, some nice points multipliers, but there's a better place to buy peach slices. A lot of people don't know about this because it is a bit of a trickier program than figuring out something like Ulta, but anyway, it's CVS. I'll prove it to you and put my receipt up on the screen. Yeah, that's real. That is absolutely real. That's the kind of deals you can find at CVS. I've wanted for a long time to make a video about how this all works, but it is so complicated and so different per CVS account that what I would recommend you is to just watch the channels that are dedicated to this topic. There's entire YouTube channels dedicated to this because it's that complicated. But if that kind of deal is worth it to you, I just cannot even tell you enough how much you should explore that. CVS has, you know, to, to a lot of people, the highest prices, but once you figure out their couponing system, this speaks for itself, doesn't it? Tell me you have hormonal acne without telling me you have hormonal acne. Well, the time has come. Let's go international. Are you ready to tour the world of affordable skincare? So, toner and essence. Come on, of course. Of course it's gonna be Korean beauty. I grabbed two to talk about because I'm trying to rein it in, but really there are endless options here. And the reason I always choose Korean toners and essences is because they are so hydrating. In the past, in US products, they used to be kind of drying. They were a lot of astringent toners made to balance your skin after using the harsh cleansers of olden times, and we are past all of that. We're past all of it. Toners need to catch up. But they've already known this in Korea, and yes, this is my favorite way to add hydration into my own routine right here in the toning and essence step. So first up, I grabbed, of course, the Beauty of Joseon Ginseng Essence Water. This is a very watery essence, but it gives you a little bit of ginseng, which is such a phenomenal ingredient. There's an entire journal dedicated to all of the research on ginseng, but in short, I would say it's an incredible anti-aging ingredient, and this lets you get some of that into your routine without breaking the bank. I also I also grabbed this one. This has to be one of the most underrated skincare products in the online skincare community. This is the Tony Moly Ceramide Moki Toner. This is the travel size, okay? This is 6.76 fluid ounces, the travel size. But get ready for this. The full size is 16 ounces. 16 fluid ounces of product for $23. And you can buy this in the US, it's even less if you wanna shop through sites like Stylevana, which I'll again link 
my video on how to save the most at Stylevana. This product is hydrating and moisturizing at the same time. Typically, I find these uh, this consistency of toner or essence to beat both of those properties. There are plenty of other companies that have something like this. You know, I would say this is a, a dupe for the Laneige cream skin refiner, although this actually, this came first. It's rich in ceramide. It feels amazing and refreshing on your skin, but there is a catch. It is not a fragrance-free product, whereas most of the products I've chosen for this video are. So do know that, but if you're okay with fragrance, man, you are gonna have so much toner if you buy the full size of this, so much. And because I'm me, I simply have to throw in the COSRX Advanced Nail 96 Mucin Power Essence because as I say quite frequently, it is my favorite product ever. I know it seems a little expensive. This one is about 25 now, right? For 3.38 fluid ounces, but I would say this actually, sorry for the confusion, I don't see this as an essence, I see it as a light serum. Because of the amount that you use of this product, you don't need a lot, so this lasts you a very long time, and hence, it is affordable. It is an incredible product for inflamed skin, for irritated skin. It is a hydrating product as well, but I think you're gonna see the most from this product if you do deal with a difficult skin type. That's why I love it, I have acne prone skin. Acne is inflammation, and it really helps me to fight the inflammation. Check out my full video on this product. I've been using it for years. There are some things you need to know. You can be allergic to snail mucin and you may not like the consistency of it. It is snail slime. It absolutely is, but it's my number one favorite product of all time. Let me tell you about something where Korean skincare just absolutely shines. It just, it comes through with this next category in such a remarkable way, and that is eye cream and eye serum. So for many years in the, again, online skincare community, people have said things like, oh, eye cream is a scam, it's just moisturizer in a tiny container for a higher price tag. All of that goes out the window when you explore Korean eye creams. For example, this one right here, the Benton Fermentation Eye Cream, this was a subscriber recommendation, I bought it for $5. And this is an entire fluid ounce for $5. How, how can you call that a scam? You know, you know what I'm saying? My long running favorite, the Hamish uh, Marine Care Eye Cream. This is the thickest eye cream I've ever encountered in my life. It is so occlusive, so protective, so healing. A lot of people call this a dupe for the La Mer, but I'm never gonna try the La Mer, trust me, I am good. So I can't confirm if it's a dupe or not, but I'm out of this. I'm sorry I can't show you. I just finished it, but I already repurchased it, and you know what I paid? $11 for, again, an ounce of a product that lasted me for over a year. The Farmstay Collagen Waterful Moist Rolling Eye Serum. I've never liked rollers. I've never in my life liked them. There have been plenty of brands that have tried to do this. This is the first brand who has ever successfully made a rolling eye serum. It's just a, a genius design, and it's incredibly affordable. It is so affordable. And let me emphasize, these are not exceptions to the rule. This is how it goes, shopping Korean eye creams. If you were on the fence about it, you know, again, I would reiterate, not everybody needs an eye cream, but if you want to explore this world of eye creams, please try Korean skincare, please. We are flying over to Japan for my favorite sunscreen. Yes, it is still the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV. What you need to know if you are in the US, and especially if you have a more sensitive skin type, is that we have not yet approved all of the filters that are available in other countries. If you struggle specifically with the chemical filters that are approved in the US and you are tired of dealing with the heavy white cast of mineral sunscreens, the dryness that can come from most mineral sunscreens, you really might wanna try importing some sunscreen. This Can Make one is so good. Can Make is a, a, a drugstore Japanese brand. It's just absolutely incredible. It is so affordable and it is so beautiful on your skin. Again, it's another product I, I have a full video on. Although that was kind, that was a first impression, right? Yeah, to update you, it's my favorite. It is my favorite. The second favorite would be The Beauty of Joseon, but I just still love this one. Make sure you buy the clear version. I've seen some people say, what's the hype? I bought it and I don't like it. And then you see they bought the white one, so that one may have a white cast. 
This one doesn't. Also, I want to try more Japanese sunscreens, so please feel free to leave recs below. I'm trying more J Beauty in particular coming soon to this channel, so drop those recs. And finally, our little international journey ends us in the country of Hungary with none other than the brand Geek & Gorgeous. Where do I even start with this brand? I adore this brand. You all saw them as one of my favorites. Basically, what I would say with this is no matter what country you're in, well, check the list. I'll have it somewhere up on the screen. They ship all over the world, and they have such incredible options of products that would cost so much more anywhere else. We'll just start with the A-Game Retinol Serum. So you know how we just talked about Youth to the People's new $58 or $68 retinaldehyde serum? This one right here is at an absolute fraction of the price and they do disclose the retinaldehyde percentage. Now retinaldehyde is stronger than retinol. And the reason is because it is only one conversion away from retinoic acid, the active form. So if you are in the US, you do not have to keep paying these very high prices for retinaldehyde serums. You do have to import it though. And one thing to know for the US is the shipping is free over 60 euros. But I'm telling you, it's not hard to hit that with this brand and all the options they have. I feel like this brand has hit a point where they cover all the actives you could need. They have one of my favorite vitamin C serums, if not my favorite. They have a fantastic uh, salicylic acid serum. They have pretty much everything you could need. And it's not just that they have them, it's that they're genuinely some of the most well done versions of those active products that I've ever seen. This brand is so incredible and I absolutely love that again, no matter where you are in the world, you have access to this company and they even ship fast. They ship fast. I don't know how they do it. Again with this brand, if you're interested in a longer term review, I do have a video. It's not a brand where I loved every last product from them because that's not the case with any brand in existence, but I, I do love them and I love what they're doing by making these accessible price points for everybody. And that is it my friends. That's my favorite, my true favorite, affordable skincare so far into the year 2022. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Drop me some of those J Beauty recs. Let me know how you all are doing. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.